um, one bead's MAC address, and it automatically uh, made the association and placed the associating association in its uh, R table. So the next time R2 needs to communicate with 1B, it does not need to send out an ARP request to learn the MAC address. It, R2 will only need to uh, consult its ARP table. And RB, well, 1B will do the same thing. Let's take a look at 1B's ARP table. And we see the uh, default gateway address or IP address, layer 3 address. That's uh, mapped to the layer 2 address, which is the MAC address. So the next time 1B needs to communicate with the default gateway, it does not have to send an ARP request. All 1B will have to do is consult its uh, ARP table. All right, let's take a look at R2 routing table. You should have one more route, three routes. Okay, so uh, this shows us that R2 is connected to two networks, the slash 23, which is this particular network, the slash 30, which is this network, and it knows about another ne network that was learned via the RIP routing protocol, which is this particular network. All right, let's go back to the instructions. Now we should be able to uh, go into simulation mode. And we should be able to uh, trace some packet flow. And what type of packet flow should we trace? Well, let me make sure I'm using the select tool. Okay. Let's do a ping. from 1B to S000 of R1. S000 of R1 is here. And 7216. 398. Now press the enter key. All right, we see the packet is currently located at our at 1B. So I'll click capture forward. Now the packet is located at the switch from the switch to R2. Okay, R1. Okay. R1 replies. The packet is now at R2. And back to 1B. All right, let's reset simulation. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to go in and make sure I've saved the configuration and the routers. I'm going to type WRMEM. This is this is not a command that you necessarily need to know at this point.
Okay, I'm going to uh, power down the devices. Actually, that was a power cycle where the one click turned off the devices and turned them back on. We'll go to real-time mode so we can uh, allow spanning tree protocol to run. And we'll lose the amber lights. They'll turn green. All right. Let's use the inspect tool to view the arc table of R of 1B. Okay, notice that it's blank. So at this moment, 1B does not have the MAC address of the default gateway. Okay, let's inspect R2. Okay. R2 has an IP address associated with the MAC address, which happens to be its own uh, F0 slash 0 interface. Let's look at the routing table. Okay, we have some routes. Same routes as before. Okay, let's go back to the uh, select button. Let's go into real time, well not real time, but uh, simulation mode. Make sure we have our filters selected and we see here that we have the appropriate filters selected. All right, let's select 1B and let's ping the default gateway. Well, better yet, let's ping S000 of R2 again. Press the enter key. Okay. Actually, I wanted to show you the ARP process. So uh, in order to do that, I need to go ahead and uh, stop this. And I'll go ahead and go back to real-time mode. Power cycle the devices. We're waiting for a spanning tree protocol to run course. All right, go back to simulation mode. This time, let's go into Edit Filters and select ARP. So we can also trace ARP flow as well. Okay. Just want to use the Inspect tool to verify that 1B ARP table is flushed. All right, go back to the Select tool. 
let one be. And let's uh, ping S000 of R1 again. And press the enter key. All right. We see here the, the PC is generating an ICMP packet, which is a ping. But the PC also determined that the uh, destination is on a different network. So it needs to send the packet to the default gateway. But it does not have the MAC address of the default gateway, so it has to get the MAC address by using the ARP process. Okay, we see the ARP process in action. Now ARP is a broadcast. That means it will go to every device on the local area network because uh, the device that's in an ARP has no idea which device owns that particular MAC address. So hence the, the process is broadcast. It goes to all the devices on the local area network. And the device with the, with the IP address will respond with its MAC address. And we see that uh, although PC1A received the uh, ARP request, it's basically going to drop it because it, it knows that uh, the uh, ARP request isn't for it. Well, how does PC1A know that the ARP request isn't for it? Let's click the uh, envelope to see. Let's look inside of the uh, packet. Okay. We see the uh, preamble and the destination address is all Fs. That means broadcast. It goes to every device on the local area network. We see the source address, which is the MAC address of PC1B. And then let's go in up, up a layer. Let's layer three to look at the actual uh, ARP information. We see the source MAC address, which is, again, PC1B. We see the source IP address, which is the IP address of PC1B. We see the target MAC address is all zeros because PC1B does not know the, the target MAC address. It's trying to get it, but it knows the target IP address, which is 172.16.1.254, which is the default gateway address. Well, PC1A knows that this ARPA request isn't for it because this is not its IP address. It's, the target IP address is not that of PC1A. Okay, so therefore PC1A would drop the uh, ARP request or, or simply not respond. However, uh, R1 should respond. And let's see that. Okay, it, it's sending a response. Let's look at the response. Okay, the response has a source MAC address, which is the MAC address of the default gateway. And the source IP address is the IP address of the default gateway. And the target MAC address is 